Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Today we're going to be looking at how to run desktop apps inside of Docker containers. This is part one in a two part series that we're going to be doing on this topic. Today we're going to be looking at use cases for GUI apps within the Docker containers. And this is a one part one of a two part series that we're going to be doing on this. Today we're going to be looking at one use case and that is consistent workloads that run in a graphical user interface such as development or productivity apps. But you want to be able to distribute these apps to uh, users and have them run on something like a desktop such as Windows. And I'm primarily going to be focusing on this Windows use case today uh, for my demo to show you how that you can use Docker containers but actually pull those up as a window on top of the Windows and uh, operating system. And so uh, you can use Docker for desktop to actually run applications that get a window in a Windows environment. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Another use case that we might think about using similar approach for running GUI apps and containers is distributed apps that, that don't want to use a virtual desktop environment where you have something like a virtual machine running and that virtual machine is actually going to be pulled up and then launching an application in that virtual machine and you log into that virtual machine and operate on that application. Well, with, with containers, you can do something very similar to that, and you can use containers to do the distribution of the application and actually host the application, but you can host that runtime in something like a container orchestration environment like Kubernetes or Docker Swarm and not have to have any kind of special client software to interact with those applications that are running in a GUI-based context. And we're gonna look at that in part two of this series that we're gonna be doing on GUI apps inside of containers. Um, there's some caveats to this, though. The main one is that this is only going to work for Linux GUI apps. At this point, Windows containers do not support a desktop environment inside of a container. I'm not going to say that will never be available. It could come about in the future, which I don't have any privy knowledge on the any kind of timeline for that, and I don't even know if it's even in development. However, uh, for Linux apps, this is a real world possibility, and it's been around since really the early days of Docker, and I'm just gonna show you something that's uh, how to do this in uh, Linux context running on Windows today, and then we'll look at the uh, second use case tomorrow uh, or in a future video on this. Now, uh, another uh, caveat it could be performance on this. If you're running a a GPU based application, something that has a lot of animation or requires a lot of GPU rendering, the constraints of a particular uh, streaming process across a network is not going to be very conducive to these GUI, uh, GUI based applications. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't be done. There are some workarounds and we'll talk about more that scenario when we took look at our uh, scenario next week where we have uh, the ability to use a remote desktop type environment uh, and running those applications. But the one that we're going to be using today is going to lend itself well to uh, GPU based applications such as CAD or animation or games or something along those lines. But for uh, standard forms apps or uh, dev tools or things like that, this, this might work very, very well uh, in those cases. So those are the caveats. So with that, let's look at the architecture, what this is gonna look like. Now, the architecture for this doesn't require that you have a deep knowledge of a uh, the Linux operating system, but it does give you does require you that you have some idea of what's going on uh, to make this work. And this is really taking advantage of some of the modularization within the uh, Linux operating system and how Linux really does a good job of separating concerns, especially when it comes to running something like desktop applications. So within the context of Linux, everything touches a X server. Now, this is not universally true. There are other desktop environments that do a similar approach, but the, the fundamental technology that most uh, Linux desktops use is called X. And X and an X server runs on a host, and that X server is responsible for interacting with the the windowed application. 
Now, an X server provides basically the, the window Chrome around the application, and it gives you the ability to move the windows around and resize them and do that kind of thing. But what actually runs within that when that application, X doesn't really do uh, much for that. That's going to fall to some kind of, of framework such as GTK, which is going to do some kind of uh, widgets and buttons and all of that. And it's basically going to provide the bitmaps for that back to X and that X is then going to interact with things like keyboards and mouse and, the, and then the monitor that's actually going to display that application. Now, this is the standard scenario that we're looking at right here for applications running on a desktop application, running on a Linux box that has X installed and that has a desktop environment installed and the app is actually up and running uh, and that and everything is running in a local context. So there is no networking involved here. There's no separation between the app and the X server. It's all in the same the same host. Now, with a Docker container, because you don't have a keyboard, mouse, and monitor attached to that Docker container, that ends up getting segmented away. And so the application still needs to be able to communicate with an X server if it's going to be available to a uh, user that has a keyboard, mouse, and monitor that he needs to uh, be able to interact with that app on. So the way that X server is designed is the very modular in that it can actually interact with apps that are in a remote context, which in a container would be something like a container running on a remote host or even one on a local host, and it gets its own IP stack and so on. And so that you can uh, then take that application and then interact with the X server over TCP. Now with our context, what we're gonna be doing for our demo th today is we're actually gonna run X server in Windows and then we're going to have a Linux based application that is a GUI app and it's going to be able to communicate with my X server over a TCP connection to the X server and it's going to be able to use my keyboard and mouse and monitor in my Windows environment and then be able to, to interact with that application that's running in a Linux app uh, Linux container and a Linux app running in that Linux host that is actually hosting that application. Set this up to use these applications that I have displayed here on this virtual machine. Now I'm using a virtual machine for this because my main dev box is set up completely differently and uh, this demo would interfere with that. So I created a virtual machine and installed what I needed to do this demo. Now the first thing that you'll need is Docker for desktop and that's very easy to install. You can simply go to Docker's website, download that, install it. Um, I'm going to exit X here because I'm already using that. And um, you want, the main thing you want to do is make sure that Docker is currently running Linux containers. If you see switch to Windows containers right here, that means you're running Linux containers uh, behind the scenes of which you'll need for this to work. Now, once you have that done, the next thing you'll need to get is something uh, called X server on Windows. Now, there are a couple of them out there. The one I like to use is XC. Uh, VCX serve Windows X server. And you can get this from uh, SourceForge right here under this URL. And with that, you can download it, install it. And once it's in downloaded and installed, everything's ready to go from that. So this is using the X server component that we talked about in the Linux context in Windows. So once I have that, I can then uh, install it and run through the wizard there. And it's going to show up as a folder on your desktop here. So I'm going to go to that folder, I'm going to click on X launch, which will launch a configuration wizard for X server in this context. So I'm going to set it to multiple windows here and you can do complete desktops here, full screen desktops, do all that. But for our purposes, I just want to use windowed applications. So they feel very native uh, per the windows uh, experience here. And um, I can start no client. I'm going to select no there. I'm going to disable access control. If I was doing this over the internet, I would want to enable access control and uh, basically have the ability to SSH into uh, my local context here from my container uh, in order to provide a secure pipe or, or have some kind of forwarded ports or something like that using SSH uh, or VPN. But in any case, I, I'm just going to disable that because I don't need it for this local context here. And once I have that, I will click finish and it will launch X down here in my tool tray and you can see that it's up and running. Now, um, the main thing you want to look at for here is that it's going to display the actual display number, which I'll need to know for when I connect my applications to this. So I'm using display zero here and I have currently zero clients connected to this application. So with that, I can now have my applications go from a container to my Windows desktop and have my local keyboard, mouse and monitor from that container. 
uh, stream the results back here. So the first one I'm gonna run is my Abbey Word here to show that I'm uh, connected to Docker, just do a Docker PS, make sure everything's working here. And I'm gonna do a Docker build against this Docker file. Before we do that, let's look at this Docker file to see true what that looks like. It's very basic. It's basically just using app get to install an application, Abbey Word. And Abbey Word will install, install all the dependencies it needs to actually run this application inside of my environment. So uh, very easy to do here. So once I have that uh, up and running, um, I can then use Abbey Word inside of that Docker container. And the only thing I really need to do then is set some kind of uh, parameters to make sure that my container can communicate with my environment. Now, the, the thing that you wanna do here then is do a Docker build just to show you what that looks like. It looks like any other standard Docker build. I'm gonna call it Abbey Word and this will build really fast. Um, it, it's the same build process that you would use for a standard Docker container. And once that image is built, you can push that to a Docker registry and distribute that application just like you would any other application. The biggest difference between this and another application is uh, that doesn't have a GUI uh, based application is the command that you would use to run it. So you still use Docker run. Basically the main thing you need to set is a display environment. Now the display variable that tells the Docker con the actual application where to find the X server for this particular uh, environment that I'm going to be running this in. And for me, that's easy to do. I can just simply run IP config and get my local IP address, which is going to be this one right here. And then I can set display. Now remember that that display number, um, I needed that as well. That's where I that's the display number that I got from X down here, which is zero. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to zero right here. And that will then set the environment variable for uh, this particular container. Now, another thing that you might wanna do is use volumes. Now, this will allow you to access um, volume information. So lo access local files on the local machine here inside the container. So um, I wanna access, I wanna be able to uh, access some of the files on my file system here. So I'm going to map my uh, C, drive backslash uh, user. Let me get, go ahead and get that folder from here. And I can go to C drive and go to my users folder uh, and then select blaze. And I'm gonna map this folder in here to, to a folder, maybe, I don't know, uh, root backslash blaze in Abbey Word. And that will give me a local volume that is mounted inside of my container so I can access any kind of documents that I might have. Now, once I have that set, I can then click run and this should launch my application as a fully windowed application inside of my context here. And so this, this feels very native to Windows and I can sit there and type and then say if I wanted to file, save this, it looks like a Linux application. It's just running in a windowed mode here. Um, so I can save as and then I can go out to that Blaze folder here. And this is my documents folder on my local desktop here. So I can say, I'm gonna save this Blaze dot and uh, save this file. And then I can come back over here and look at my documents folder here. And there's that Blaze Abbey Word file I just saved from within the context of my container. So that's a very quick demo on how you could use Abbey Word. Now, some, some more advanced scenarios might be using something like Chrome or uh, looking at something like a dev environment. So I have here Chrome that I have built a Docker file for, and I want to take a look at this one. It's a little bit more than what we saw with the Abbey Word uh, version, except it's not that much more because really all it's doing is just getting Chrome from the sources and it's downloading the, the, the dev file and installing the dev file and then setting up the environment to run Chrome. So uh, it sets this parameter here because it is running uh, Chrome in a root context. I would probably uh, want to change that if I was gonna make this more production ori oriented as well. And I could use this container for a number of different things like UI testing or uh, a lot of different things. If I wanted to install uh, specific applications in this alongside of Chrome, you can automate things like with Selenium inside of a container using a very similar approach. And if you wanted to watch the results, you can connect it up to a X server and watch it stream the results back if you wanted to do automated UI testing in a very similar environment like this. But with this, I can take this same Docker file and I can uh, then run uh, my CMD environment 
let's go ahead and get the uh, the full path for this and let's um, go ahead and run the uh, commands to make this work and so to do that i can do a docker run and i've already built this so i'm not going to go through that process again i'm going to do it dash e and then i'm going to say display equals and then we're 192 dot uh, 192.168.255. What was my IP address? I don't remember. So uh, let's do the IF config, IP config here on Windows, not IF config, that's Linux. Um, 134, that's what I'm looking for. And, and let's back that out, paste it in, and then use display zero, which we already have seen. You can put quotes around this if you so choose. And then I'm going to uh, simply say run Chrome. And this will launch my, my Chrome browser in a container. Now, it's doing a lot of output here. And some of that might be errors. And uh, look, it's looking for uh, some things that aren't uh, so much connected to this. And uh, that's okay. It's not going to cause it to crash. Uh, and it's giving me that, that make Chrome my default browser because this is actually the first time I've actually used this. It's thinking that's a brand new fresh install and automatically seeing crash reports, depending on if you want to you know, and check any of those boxes if you so choose. And so uh, it's telling me that I'm using the dash dash sandbox. Uh, it says stability or security could suffer because of that, because I am running this as root. And if I wanted to pull up a website in this, I simply go to w.wintelect. Um, now the performance of this isn't exactly spectacular because this is actually doing all the rendering on the actual CPU and not on the GPU uh, for this particular container. Uh, and that does make this thing slow down quite a bit if I was uh, wanting to, um, use this in a more production and like environment. Now there are ways to get GPU acceleration inside of containers, which is kind of outside the scope of what we're going to be doing here. Um, and, uh, but in any case, you could definitely use the, the GPU accelerated, uh, containers to get better performance out of these. If you want to do more accelerated, uh, tests for that. So if I could actually type in www.wintelect.com and uh, that will pull up Windelux website inside of a container in a browser running on a Windows host and streaming the results back to us. So this is one way that you can see how you can use uh, different kinds of applications inside of containers running those against a Linux-based container streaming the results back to a Windows environment. So thanks for watching this episode of Tech on Fire with Blaze. Next week, we're going to look at how you can use something like a virtual desktop environment and use the browser as your client so you don't have any special software to actually connect to this and you can actually stream applications back to something like a browser and interact with those applications, their desktop applications running inside of a browser. So until next time, thanks for watching this episode of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.